Welcome to a quick overview of the classic TV series Dragnet. Airing in the early 1950s, the show became very popular in America. Its simple storytelling and realistic depiction of police work fascinated viewers nationwide. But what keeps Dragnet special even today? Stick around as we explore the many interesting, surprising, and sad facts about it. As we dig into this timeless series, think about what qualities you think make it still important in the entertainment world. What parts of it do you think people still connect with today? Share your thoughts. Have you ever had a personal experience or been inspired by Dragnet? Share your story in the Kamala entrance. Whether it's a fond memory or a lesson learned from watching, we'd love to hear from you. So keep watching as we uncover more about Dragnet. And remember to share your own stories and memories below. We're excited to hear from you. One of the most influential police procedural dramas on television is Dragnet. The series, created by actor-producer-director Jack Webb, is a realistic portrayal of police officers and detectives showcasing their daily risks for public safety. Webb collaborated closely with the Los Angeles Police Department, basing most episodes on real cases and depicting modern police procedures accurately. The show enjoyed in Milimterin's success, even becoming the first TV series adapted into a motion picture in 1954. Dragnet served as a platform for many aspiring actors, launching the careers of numerous stars who would go on to achieve greater recognition. With a recurring cast and groundbreaking format, it set the standard for future police dramas, continuing to influence television for over 65 years. The movie adaptation in 1954 marked a significant milestone, making Dragnet a pioneer in the transition from TV to film. The show's impact goes beyond its initial run as it remains a significant force in shaping police dramas. Its authenticity, collaboration with law enforcement, and focus on real cases have left an indelible mark on the genre. Cheers to the lasting influence of Dragnet. During its second season, the show faced scheduling challenges due to Barton Yarbrough's death, who played Friday's original partner. This unexpected loss threw the production into disarray, forcing the team to scramble for solutions. With episodes already in the pipeline, they had to find a way to navigate the absence of Yarbrough's character. As a result, there were alternating weeks of airing episodes until Ben Alexander joined as Friday's new partner, Frank Smith. His addition brought a fresh dynamic to the show, albeit tinged with the sadness of Yarbrough's departure. The transition wasn't seamless, but eventually the chemistry between Alexander and Jack Webb's Friday began to connect with audiences once again. Though the 1967 version of the show is often hailed as the peak of its success, it is primarily associated with Sergeant Joe Friday, portrayed by Jack Webb. His stoic demeanor and unwavering Kamalan treatment to the truth became iconic, shaping the character into a cultural touchstone. Despite popular belief, Friday never said just the facts, ma'am. The actual phrase was all we want are the facts, ma'am. This subtle distinction reflects Friday's dedication to precision and accuracy in his investigations. In the annals of television history, the show remains a cornerstone of the police procedural genre, with its influence felt in countless subsequent productions. This speaks volumes about Sergeant Joe Friday and the world he inhabited. One of the busiest radio actors in the business, with regular appearances on shows like Dragnet, Nightbeat, and The Lone Ranger, had an extensive range, playing various female characters. She was radio's female equivalent to William Conrad, Ben Wright, and Elliot Lewis. Most titles featured a lot of orange hues, from tangerine to burnt pumpkin to bright Aztec gold, worn by both men and women, spanning different skin tones. Gangbusters ran on alternate weeks with the series on NBC on Thursday nights for a little more than a season. Gangbusters held the highest ratings when NBC decided to cancel it, opting to air the series weekly instead. Raymond Burr portrayed the real-life LAPD chief of detectives Thad Brown in the series. The badges and identification cards featured in the show were authentic items from the Los Angeles Police Department. Friday's badge number matches the number of Babe Ruth's career home runs in the major leagues. This number was retired by the LAPD after Jack Webb's passing. In the 1960s, Stan Freeberg, known for his funny take on popular 45 RPM recordings, wanted to make a spoof of Dragnet. However, he couldn't get permission to use the Dragnet theme music because Jack Webb, the guy behind Dragnet, was really protective of it. So Freeberg went straight to Webb and played St. George and the Dragon Net for him. Jack Webb supposedly burst out laughing and gave Freeberg the green light to use the theme. 
Richard L. Breen wrote his only episode for the series, The Big Little Jesus, only after agreeing to write the movie based on it. Contrary to what many people think, Joe Friday, the character played by Jack Webb, never actually said just the facts, ma'am, in any episode of Dragnet. The real line was all we want are the facts, ma'am. In the early 1950s, Dragnet, a groundbreaking TV series, achieved notable milestones. Notably, it became the first television show to inspire a movie spin-off, a historic event in American TV. This marked both the beginning of TV shows turning into movies and the unique event of a movie spin-off releasing while the original series was still airing. The production company owned the police cars featured in the show. In the beginning, they used early 1950s Ford mainline sedans similar to the police cars of that time. Surprisingly, one of these cars survived and ended up in Fontana, California, where it served as a marked police vehicle equipped with a strong L-head 289 coup in V8 engine and a three-speed manual transmission. Later on, in the 1967-70 series, they used Ford Fairlane sedans as detective units, even though the LAPD didn't use Fairlanes for police or detective work. The show also had an influence beyond television, spawning two million selling hit singles. In the Summa Limiter of 1953, Ray Anthony and his orchestra recorded the show's theme music titled Dragnet. Additionally, a three-minute speaking satire titled St. George and the Dragonet, recorded by comedian Stan Freeberg, his co-writer Dawes Butler, and June Foray reached the top of the charts, claiming the one spot. In Summa Lamtrary, Dragnet left a significant impact on television history, being the catalyst for the first-ever TV to movie spin-off and showcasing unique police car choices. Its influence even stretched into the music scene, with two hit singles emerging from its theme. The show's importance remains evident in American television history. Dragnet, a famous TV show from 1951, had a few changes in its main characters early on. One actor, Barton Yarbrough, sadly died after filming only one episode. Another actor, Barney Phillips, had a habit of wetting his lips, which caused some problems. Herbert Ellis left the show quickly because he looked too much like the main character, Joe Friday. Surprisingly, Ben Alexander, who later became Joe Friday's main partner, was only supposed to be in one episode. Mad Magazine made a funny version of the show called Dragged Net. This spoof show would how popular and well-known the show was. In the show, Joe Friday and his partners used the radio call sign 1K80 to Kamalam to runicate. Dragged Net was more than just a crime show. It became famous in different ways like being parodied in Mad Magazine. The radio call sign added realism to the show. So, Dragnet not only dealt with solving crimes, but also had interesting casting changes and got recognized in unexpected places like Mad Magazine, showing its importance in TV history. During its initial run, the TV series known as Dragnet was sometimes syndicated under the alternate title badge 714. This practice was comlantrin in early television to distinguish reruns from new episodes. Similarly, The Andy Griffith Show was syndicated as Andy of Maybury. In DVD releases of Dragnet, certain episodes are labeled as Badge 714. Harry Morgan, who starred alongside him in Dragnet 1967, was allow Wood to inject his own humor into the show. This collaboration showcased a different side of the series. Following his passing, the Los Angeles Police Department retired Badge number 714, which was used by his character Joe Friday. This badge originally belonged to Lieutenant Dan Cook, a close friend of his. 